magandang umaga po sa inyo mga mahal kong kapatid at uh, mag-aaral po tayo ngayon, okay? Panoorin po natin ang ating uh, lesson ngayong umaga and we will now jump on the book of numbers. We will jump on the book of numbers and I hope you will learn something today in our study. The book of Numbers. This fourth book of the Bible carries forward the story of Israel after their exodus from slavery in Egypt. God had brought them to Mount Sinai, and he entered into a covenant with them there. And despite Israel's rebellion, God had graciously provided a way for Israel to live near his holy presence in the tabernacle. So the book of Numbers begins as Israel wraps up their one-year stay at Mount Sinai, and they head out into the wilderness on their way to the land that God promised Abraham. Now the book's storyline is designed according to the stages of their journey. So the first section begins at Mount Sinai, but then they set out and travel to the wilderness of Paran. And then from there, they travel to the plains of Moab, which is right across from the Promised Land. Now the first part opens with a census where the people are numbered, that's where the book gets its name, and then there are laws about how the tribes of Israel were to be arranged in their camp. So the tabernacle was to be at the center, and then around that, the priests and the Levites, and then around them, the twelve tribes neatly arranged with Judah at their head. Now this was all an elaborate symbol about how God's holy presence was at the center of their existence as a people. This is all followed by a whole series of laws that develop the purity laws from the book of Leviticus. If God's presence was going to be in their midst, every effort should be made to make the camp pure, a place that welcomes God's holiness. In chapter 10, the cloud of God's presence lifts from the tabernacle and guides Israel away from Sinai out into the wilderness, and immediately things go terribly wrong. So in chapter 11, the people start complaining about their hunger and thirst and how they want to go back to Egypt. And then in chapter 12, Moses' own brother and sister begin opposing and badmouthing him in front of all of the people. This trip is not off to a good start. The next section begins as the Israelites arrive in the desert of Paran, about halfway to the Promised Land. And God tells Moses to send out the 12 spies, one for each tribe, so they can scout out the Promised Land. So when the spies all return, ten of them say that there is no chance Israel can survive there because the Canaanites will destroy them. But there are two spies, Caleb and Joshua, who say that God can save them. But the ten whip up the people into a fearful rage and they start planning a mutiny. They're going to appoint a new leader and head back to Egypt. So God is understandably angry and Moses intercedes on the people's behalf. He calls God to be faithful to his promises to Abraham. And so God does, but not at the expense of his justice. He gives these Israelites what they want to not enter the land. And God sentences this generation to wander in the wilderness for 40 years until they die. Only their children will get to enter the promised land. Now you'd think this severe consequence would wake them up, but it gets even worse. So in the next story, there's a whole group of Levites that begin a rebellion. And they challenge Moses and Aaron's leadership, saying that they have gone way too far. So God deals severely with these Levites, and he renews his commitment to Moses and Aaron as Israel's leaders. Now, as they leave the region of Paran and hit the road, it goes downhill yet again. The Israelites start complaining again about their thirst, and they ask why Moses even brought them out of Egypt in the first place. So God tells Moses to speak to a rock to bring out water for all of the people. But Moses doesn't really do this. He oversteps his bounds. He hits the rock twice and then says, you rebels, do we have to bring water out of this rock? So Moses dishonors God by putting himself in God's place as the one who brings out the water. And so Moses brings down on himself the same fate as the wilderness generation. He too will die in the desert and never get to enter the promised land. After this, the Israelites rebel yet again. And God brings a very strange judgment on them, venomous snakes to come and bite the people. And so Moses again intercedes on behalf of the people. And God tells Moses to do this, to make a bronze snake and to lift it up on a pole, so that whoever looks at this snake would be healed of the poisonous snake bite. It's a very strange symbol. But it speaks to the challenge that God has by being faithful to his covenant. He's right to bring justice on the Israelites' evil and sin. But even God's justice gets transformed into a source of life for those who will look to God for healing. From here, the people head into the plains of Moab. And the first main part of the section focuses on the strange figure of Balaam. 
So the king of Moab is freaked out at this huge group of people traveling through his territory. So he hires a pagan sorcerer, Balaam, to pronounce curses on Israel. And three different times, Balaam finds that he cannot curse them. He can utter only blessing upon Israel. Remember God's promise to Abraham from Genesis 12. So not only can Balaam not curse Israel, but God actually gives him a vision about a future Israelite king who will one day bring God's justice to all of the nations. This vision recalls Jacob's promised Judah in Genesis chapter 49. Now it's worth stopping to reflect on the flow of the book so far. The rebellion stories in the wilderness, they just heap up on one another getting worse and worse. And while God does bring partial acts of judgment on Israel, he's also kept showing mercy, providing food and water along the way. And so the Balaam story, it shows God's grace in bright colors. Because here's Israel, they're down in the camp grumbling and rebelling, but up in the hills, unbeknownst to them, God is protecting and even blessing them. And it's this contrast between Israel's rebellion and God's faithfulness in the wilderness, that's what made these stories so important for later generations of Israel. So the wilderness stories are retold time and again by later biblical prophets, and poets, and even in the New Testament. And these stories always serve as a warning that while God will remain faithful to his covenant promises, he will also allow his people to walk away in rebellion and face the consequences. After this, the rest of the book focuses on the children of the wilderness generation, and they begin preparing to inherit the promised land. They take another census of the new generation, then they go on and win a number of battles with the people groups around them, and then a few tribes even begin to settle in the promised land. So the book ends with the new generation poised to enter into the land, and Moses is about to deliver his final words of wisdom and warning. But for now, that's what the Book of Numbers is all about. Sana po, nag-gets po natin yung istorya ano, ng Book of Numbers. If you recall, in the Book of Leviticus, we are, uh, the place is under the foot of Mount, is under Mount Sinai. In the foot of Mount Sinai, ando po sila sa baba ng uh, lupain. They traveled doon po sa uh, wilderness after that. So, makikita po natin, doon sa lesson na ito ngayong araw na to. So pag-aralan po natin ngayon, ano ang mababasa natin pag binuklat po natin ang Book of Numbers? Pangatlong aklat po ito, uh, pang-apat pang, pang na aklat po ng Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. The fourth book of the fourth book of uh, the Bible and even the fourth book of Moses's five books which is the Pentateuch is the Book of Numbers. So, pag binuklat po natin ang Book of Numbers, ano po yung mga makikita natin at matututunan po natin? Yan po yung ating pag-aaralan. Kung paano pong sa Leviticus na pag-aaralan po natin, na ito po yung uh, mababasa po natin dito ay yung kabanalan ng Diyos at ng uh, uh, Levitical priesthood, kung paano nire-require niya ang mga tao na ma-please siya. Ang Diyos ay seryoso. He saved them from Egypt, but God is serious about their fellowship. God is concerned on how we can be able to please Him. Okay, so the book of Leviticus is about God's holiness and the requirements of the offerings. Itong mga offerings na ito, mga kapatid, kagaya ng, uh, review lang tayo konti, kagaya ng mga napag-aralan natin, hindi ito pahirap. The offerings that God requires from Israel is not really a burden for them, but really a chance for them. Hindi po, kasi na, depende po ang kabigatan, alam nyo mga kapatid, nakadepende po yan sa kung anong dahilan ng kabigatan na yan. Halimbawa po, uh, nabibigat ang kasagastos, pero hindi naman kailangan mabigat. Pero nabibigat ang kasagasos, pero ang kapalit nito siguro ay pag-aaral ng iyong anak, magaan. Nakita nyo, same, same pain, same, same burdens, but because of the different purpose or different uh, acknowledgement of the pain, magiging magaan po sa atin. So doon po sa Leviticus, all these offerings, the sin offering, the trespass offering, the burnt offering, the meal offering, the, the peace offering, which is the wave offering, these offerings might be too much for them, but because knowing the reason behind these things would let the Israelites continually do it. 
ano yung dahilan? Ang dahilan ng Panginoon is to have to to give them a chance to fellowship with God so that God would dwell among his people para makasama nila ang presensya ng Panginoon hindi po biro ang mapunta sa wilderness at lalong hindi biro po ang manatili sa Egypt as slaves they stayed for 400 years in Egypt as slaves and God had mercy on them made them his people and thank God the greatest thing that has happened was they were saved but it's not just being saved after being saved there are things beyond our salvation Marami pong mangyayari, kaya nga po pagkatapos nila sa Egypt, hindi pa tapos ang lahat. Marami pang bagay na maaari silang gawin na siyang kailangan po nila para po makasama ang Panginoon. At hindi po ito kabigatan, ito'y pribileyo. Kaya ang Book of Leviticus, punong-puno ng mga paghahandog, punong-puno ng mga sacrifices because God was giving His people a chance to please Him and to have fellowship with Him. Alam nyo, nung mga nakaraang araw, nari-realize ko yan. Nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon. Sabi ko, I supposed to do this and that in my daily life. I supposed to offer, need to buy need to buy a live goat, need to buy a live cow, or even a, a turtle dove, or, or, or a pigeon, para ho may alay. But, pero, thank God, the Bible tells us, when Christ died at the cross, it was a package. It was an enough perfect package of salvation, sanctification, and holy living. Christ is enough for God. Christ is even the very image of those illustrations of the Old Testament. Christ is the fulfillment of the law. And so when I have Christ in my life, when I trusted Christ as my Savior, now I have I have this privilege of not needing any more other sacrifices. Hindi ko na kailangan ng iba pang handog sapagkat yung handog ni Kristo ay sapat na. All I need to do is to be crucified with Christ. The Bible tells us when Paul said that, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. Sinabi ni Paul, na ang malino na sinabi ni Paul, eh hindi niya na kailangan po. Na, namatay na siya kay Kristo. So tayo, ang ibig sabihin nun, hindi mo na kailangan mag-alay. Pero, lagi kang magpasapop kay Kristo. Ah, mas mahirap naman po yung lagi kang magkakatay ng baka at kambing. Ang pakasarap na ngayon, maaari kang magpasakop sa kanya sa pamamagitan ng isang taintim na panalangin, kausapin mo siya at iwanan mo ang mga bagay na ayaw niya sa buhay mo. Pangalawa po ay mabuhay tayong sumusunod sa kanyang utos. Ano ho? So napakaganda ng pribileyo pinagkaloob ng Panginoon sa atin. Wala na tayong mga alayan pero tuloy pa rin po ang ating pag-aalay ng buhay kay Kristo. We are now the living sacrifice. It's a privilege to serve God. It's a pri- and we thank God that God is a God of chances. After salvation, we've been we've been doing mistakes a lot, ano, uh, mga pagkukulang natin, mga shortcomings natin sa Panginoon. But Christ is there as our advocate. We can come to God's throne of grace every time. Makakabalik tayo sa Panginoon, kausapin natin siya, gawin natin yung kalugod-lugod sa kanyang harapan. Okay? So I hope and I pray na, na naintindihan po natin ang pinaka-message ng Leviticus. Now, tuloy na po tayo sa Numbers. Ano po yung makikita natin sa Book of Numbers? Numbers is the Book of Wanderings. Ang, ang aklat po ng Numbers, patungkol po ito sa paglalakad nila doon sa wilderness. The Book of, the book of Numbers is a, the Book of Numberings o Wanderings. Kawalan. Wandering, W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G, W-A, wonder, wonder. Kasi, pagpunta, paggaling po ng Leviticus, they started to move forward. And they supposed to travel just somehow 11 days, I think. Kaya lang ho, may mga problema na nangyari. Ano? Kaya mo ko, kung napanood nyo sa introduction natin, tumagal. Imbis na saglit lang silang mag-travel, umabot sila ng 40 years. Naku po, naku po, naku po. Okay? So, most of the book, however, so, it's about wilderness wanderings, but the name numbers is from the two census. Pasore, bakit po pinangalanang numbers, no? Bakit tinawag na book of numbers? Kasi ninumber sila. 
Pinangalanan sila. Nagkaroon ng Philippine Statistics Authority. Nagkaroon ng NSO. Nagkaroon sila ng census. Ni number po yung mga tao. Yun po yung dahilan kung bakit ang pangalan nitong aklat ay Book of Numbers. Dalawang census po ang nangyari dito. Unang-una, bago sila biyumahe, papaalis doon sa bundok. Before they go out from the, 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 the foot of Mount Sinai, from the foot of Mount Sinai, through the wilderness to the promised land, they made a census. The people were named, the people were numbered. At yun po yung minsan nakakaantok basahin sa Bible, but we have to somehow be patient in reading God's Word. And these names were numbered, but after that, 40 years after, binilang po ulit sila. Ano po? Binilang po ulit sila, mga mahal kong kapatid, at ang pagkabilang po sa kanila ay ito nga po, itong uh, uh, mga anak na po nila. Kasi nga, mga nagpasaway po yung mga tatay, kaya po pinahintulutan ng Lord na yung mga anak ang mananatili na makakatungtong sa promised land. Okay, so do not forget ha, why the title is Numbers. Bakit Numbers, Pastor, ang pangalan? Ayan. Because of that, because of the numberings, okay? And then, makikita po natin, tinatawag din po ang Book of Numbers na Book of Murmurings. Book of Murmurings. Alam niyo yung Murmurings? Patuloy po na na pagrereklamo hindi lang ng Israel. Hindi lang ng Israel, pati na rin itong, not, not just Israel as a whole, but even Moses. Hindi man siya nagsalita eh, pero pinukpok niya yung bato na kung saan dapat sinabi lang ng Panginoon, kausapin. Okay? Pagkatapos, meron pa, eh, si Aaron at saka si Miriam. So, si, si Miriam at saka si Aaron, nagreklamo din kay Moses. Pagkatapos, tung si Kora, meron pong isang lahi ng Levites, gusto si Labida. Naingit na siguro sila kay Moises, sinugod si Moises, kinain ng lupa. And the usual murmurs of the Pentateuch, siyempre itong mga Israelita. Laging angal ng angal, reklamo ng reklamo, buti na lang, kundi nalang mula lang, bakit pa kasi napunta tayo dito, dapat doon na lang kami sa Egypt. Yung mga ganong mga bagay na patuloy po nila nga mga sinasabi lagi. Kaya yun po yung, uh, kaya tinawag po itong Book of Murmurings. Tinawag din itong Book of Journeying. Journeyings. Kaya dahil nga yung journey nila sa wilderness. At saka po, Fourth Book of Moses. The Fourth Book of Moses, which is the Book of Numbers. So, that's the Book of Numbers. Now, alam naman po natin, oh, so number one, the book. Number two, the author. Uh, we don't have to dwell much on that. Because we've been studying it ever since. Na ang author po ng Book of Numbers si Moses. Okay po, lima po ang nakalat ni Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Five books of Moses. Ano ho? Kaya yung ikafort yung Numbers. Si Moses pong nagsulat niyan. Marami pong talata sa Bible na nagsasabing siya. Marami pong mga evidences outside the book na makikita natin na ipinopoint kay Moises kagaya po ng 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1 to 11. Mga binasa po natin 'yan ano po, iisa pong aklat po yung 5 books ni Moises na 'yan na sa Japong si Moses po ang nag-claim ng Bible as the writer as, as the author, okay? Na po sa po yung lugar ng Book of Numbers. Ano yung time ng Book of Numbers? Okay, so pakinggan niyo po ka, listen to this. Leviticus covers only one month. Sambuan lang po. Pero yung numbers, yung numbers, tong book of numbers, it is stretches over almost 39 years. 39 years. It records Israel's movement from the last 20 days of Mount Sinai, the wandering around Kadesh Barnea, and finally arrival in the flames of Moab. Kung napansin nyo kanina, dito sa picture, ayan ang numbers. Nakita nyo yung tatlong, chap, tatlong grupo. Pag hinati ati yung book of numbers, yung chapter 1 to 10, andun pa rin sila kung saan nangyari sa Leviticus. Okay? Chapter 1 to 10, tapos chapter 10 to 12, yun, nag-travel sila. Sa chapter 13 to 19, dun sila sa wilderness of Paran. Andun na po sila sa wilderness of Paran. Okay ho? So chapter 10 to 12, Lakad po yan, travel po yan, and it took them uh, so much years. 
Alam niyo mga kapatid, mamaya ipapaliwanag ko itong kont sa sana itong uh, konting takbo lamang na nila, konting lakaran lang sana nila, tumagal sila dito sa Kadesh Barnia. They stayed here for about 30 plus years. Konting lakad na lang, hindi na sila sa plains of Moab. Pero tumagal yan dahil nga sa kapasawayan nila. So they stayed here in the wilderness and then chapter 20 to 21 travel na naman, tas 22 to 36 sa plain of Moab, katabi na po yan. Katabi na po yan noong uh, tinatawag natin na uh, promised land. nakipag na nga po sila Moises dyan eh. Ma later pag-aaralan po natin na yung promised land nahati sa dalawa. Yung unang side, si Moises nakatapak pa doon. Nakapag, na ano pa nila yun eh, natalo pa nila yung mga kalaban. Pero yung kabila, hindi na. Hindi na po. Yung kabila po, hindi na. Gawa nga po nang nagpasaway din si Moises at si Joshua na lang po ang nakarating doon. So, there are three stages, there are three settings, may tatlong lugar na kung saan makikita natin dito sa ating book of numbers. Yung pong Mount Sinai, andun pa rin sila sa baba. Ito, yung nangya, ito rin yung same place with Leviticus. And then they started to travel. And then, much of their time here is spent was spent in the wilderness of Paran. And then after the wilderness of Paran, they arrive in the plains of Moab. So yan, mga bagay na yan, mga kapatid, ang mapapag-aralan sa Book of Numbers. Okay? So yun po yung ating makikita sa Book of Numbers. Pagkatapos, sabi dito, It records Israel's movement from the last 20 days of Mount Sinai, the wandering around Kadesh Barnea, and the arrival in the plains of Moab in the 40th year. Their tents occupy several square miles whenever they camp since there are probably over 2.5 million people based on the census figures in Numbers 1 and 26. 2.5 million na nagtra-travel. Sobrang dami, no? Sobrang dami, mga kapatid. But God, listen, God, for these 2.5 million people in the wilderness, God miraculously feeds and sustains them in the desert. He preserves their clothing and gives them manna, meat, water, leaders, and a promise. God has been so faithful despite of the many murmurings of these people. Just try to imagine for 40 years of travel, God has given traveling mercies. Food to be eaten and strength to keep on living in such life that they had. Mga mahal kong kapatid, doon po, no, ilang, ilang taon yan. 40 years, 39 plus years, mga kapatid. Okay, kasama yung uh, isang taon ng uh, uh, book of Exodus, kaya po 40 years. Okay po, I hope you're getting it. The Christ. Pastor, uh, uh, every time... Every time we study the books of the Bible, we always see the passages or the illustrations of the Lord Jesus. Knowing that the whole Bible is Christocentric. Pag sinabing Christocentric, sa bawat aklat ng Biblia, si Kristo po ay naipapahayag. Nag, nagdadala po tayo, na idirekta po tayo nito kay Kristo. And the Bible is a Christocentric book. Every book of the Bible speaks about the Lord Jesus. And so, in the book of Numbers, you find Christ portrayed. Inilalarawan po si Kristo sa book of Numbers greatly, clearly, with the brazen serpent. You see that? Pastor, hindi pa po ba nila sinambay? Hindi po nila sinambay. Ang bawal po sumambay. Kaya po marirealize po ninyo yung sinabi ng Exodus na Huwag kayong gagawa ng uh, inukit na larawan o yung uh, bre, uh, huwag kayong gagawa ng mga nililok na larawan para luran. Hindi po masamang gumawa ng estatwa. Ang masama, yung gagawa ka ng estatwa, gagawin mo Diyos. Hindi po ginawang Diyos yan, ha? Yan po ay ginawa sapagkat kinaki, kasi yung mga na, na poison po ng snake bites marami. So gumawa ng milagro ang Panginoon para iangat yan ni Moises, the brazen serpent, Okay? Ayan, makikita po natin yan. Kung mapapansin nyo po, yan po yung uh, simbolo ng medicine natin ngayon. Uh, yung pong simbolo ng medicine, yung mga doktor, ano po, at panggagamot, mapapansin nyo po, di ba, ahas at tungkod, 
nakuha po yan kay Moises. Okay? Diyan po nakuha yan. Okay? So, yan po yung brazen serpent. Bakit po niyan nilalarawan si Jesus Christ? It pictures Christ because it was written clearly in John chapter number 3. Ano? And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Okay? So, kung papaano daw. So, inalintulad ito sa ating pananampalataya kay Kristo. Itong brazen serpent na ito. Lahat na magtitiwala doon sa pag-angat ni Moise. Lahat ng titingin at magtitiwala ay gagaling. Yung po ano ho. At doon po natin makikita yan. So, isa po yan. Not, not just that, but one of the many illustration of Jesus in the book of Numbers. Not just the brazen serpent, but also... Uh, the rock that quenches the thirst of the multitude is Christ as well. Yung pong bato na nag-gush out yung maraming tubig na iinumin nila, it is the Lord Jesus Christ as well. Ganon din naman po yung mana, the mana from heaven. Lalo pong may papaliwanag dito yung pag-ulan ng mana from heaven para po kakanin nila. Alam nyo po ba na ito'y larawan ng Panginoong Jesus? Christ is the bread of heaven na binigay po sa atin mga minamahal para po pag tayo ay tumanggap sa kanya ano eh tayo po ay magkakaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan kabusugang walang humpay mga kapatid okay kat alam niyo pati si Balaam yung magka-curse sa kanila even Balaam himself even Balaam himself ano ho even Balaam himself noong pong sila ay uh, Noong pong si Balaam ay i-curse sana sila. Aba, instead na cursing eh, biglang nabanggit niya pa ang mangyayari sa Panginoong Yesus. Sabi niya, I shall see him but not now. I shall beho behold him but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. May lalabas na hari, ano ho, dyan sa Israel na yan. And it is about the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ has many pictures in the book of Numbers. Alam nyo, ang ganda-ganda nga po kung napapansin nyo po yung lugar nila sa bahay nila, papakita ko po sa inyo kung papaano po yung kanilang mga bahay ay ipinatayo ng Panginoon sa wilderness. Tingnan po natin o, para makita nyo po. Tingnan nyo yung position nila. Do you see the position? etong nakikita nyo sa gitna, ayan, yung iniikot ko yung araw, yan ang tabernacle of the congregation. Yan po yung tabernaculo, yan po yung pag-alay. Yan ang nasa gitna, it pictures the cross. Tingnan nyo po yung lining ng kalilang mga bahay. O, oh, di ba pa-cross. Oh, yan po ang utos ng Panginoon sa kalila. Malinaw po, Old Testament pa lang, kagaya po ng tinuro sa atin ni Evangelist dyan, ang kaligtasan ng Old Testament saints ay sa pag pag pananampalataya sa darating na tagapagligtas. At ito po lahat ay naglalarawan sa tagapagligtas. These all are pictures of Jesus, the tabernacle, even their dwelling tents. Tingnan nyo ho, it's about the cross. It's about the it's about Calvary. Okay? Saling, ano, ang hiwaga at ang napakabuti ng Panginoon. Pati sa Old Testament, hindi po siya nagkulang sa pagpapaalala ng kaligtasan ng tao. At saka yung Day of Atonement, which pictures the salvation that Christ has done for us. Ano, pag-aaralan po natin yan. Tayo, tuloy na po tayo. Ano po ang keywords sa numbers? Alam nyo, more than the word numbers, yung pagbibilang sa kanila, yung census, ang pinaka-keyword po sa Book of Numbers ay yung pong kanilang wanderings. Kanilang pagta-travel. Their wanderings. They are traveling in the wilderness. So, the keyword in the Book of Numbers is the word wanderings. W-A-N. Wanderings. Numbers records the failure of Israel to believe in the promise of God and the resulting judgment of wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Dahil hindi sila naniniwala sa Diyos at makukulit sila kay Moises at sa Panginoon, imbis na saglit lang silang magtra-travel, yung buong book of Numbers na 40 years, 39 plus years, na Google po nila, na ubus po nila, kakabiyahe. Mapapag-aralan po natin yan sa lessons natin. I will just be giving the exact verses later, pero introduction pa lang naman tayo ngayon. Sa isa-isa po nating Sunday School lesson, mapapag-aralan po natin yan. Yung pattern, oo, yung pattern ng bahay nila, kung saan po inilalagay. Ano po, nandito po yan sa Book of Numbers, kasama po yan sa kanilang wanderings, yung 
pagka pagka settle po nila in order po ang pag, paglalagay po ng kanilang mga bahay ano ho at kung titingnan po natin sa aerial view it would look like a cross ano ho tatlo sa taas tatlo sa baba tatlo sa west tatlo sa tatlo sa east ano ho tatlo sa north tatlo sa south and then at the middle of it is the tabernacle of the congregation so ang ganda-ganda po ng book of numbers pati nga yung Leviticus eh kung papapag-aralan po natin yung sa Leviticus ang pinaka nag ang pinaka nag uh, Uh, nag, nagbabagabag sa puso ko nito yung ganun kaseryoso ang Panginoon pag nagkakasala tayo kailangan lagi tayong babalik sa Kanya kasi hindi maganda ang buhay na na hindi ka nagko-confess ng kasalanan mo sa Diyos buti nga tayo, confession na lang eh sa kanila noon, offering sila ng offering kada kasalanan, offering, kada araw may burnt offering tayo, salamat, may Panginoong Yesus tayo eh, pero marapat po na pag tayo nagkakasala kailangan po nating i-confess ito sa Panginoon aminin natin, iwaksi natin sabi natin sa Kanya, kasi seryoso po yan hindi umasaya ang Diyos na pa, pa yung, kaya nga, doon natin makikita yung requirement ng Panginoon. Kasi marami na yung churches, and even tayo, pwedeng nangyayari yan. Membro tayo ng church, pero gumagawa tayo ng kalokohan, uh, pasaway pa rin tayo. Kailangan ma-realize natin, oo, oh, totoo, and hindi tayo perfect, pero God is so serious. God is so serious about your personal life. God is so serious about your sin. God is so serious about yung mga notiness natin. Hindi masaya ang Diyos yan. You've, you've got to go back to God and tell God, Lord, I'm sorry, this is my sin, forgive me. Okay po? Ha? So, ganun po, ganun po. Ha? Maganda po ang, ang mga Old Testament books na, na isa-isa po natin ang mga pinaka-pinupunto. Lalo na po, of course, literally sa Israel, but uh, principle-wise, hanggang sa atin ang mga anak ng Panginoon. Ano ho, kasi sila ho ang halimbawa natin. Okay? So, the key word in the book of Numbers is wanderings. And then, the key verses. The key verses is Numbers chapter 14 verse 22 to 23. Numbers chapter 14 verse 22 to 23. Tignan po natin ang sabi ng Bible. Because all those men which have seen my glory... And my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these ten times and have not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. Nakita nyo? Nakita nyo yung verse? Did you understand the verse, folks? Naintindihan nyo po yung mga talata na sinabi ng Panginoon. Bakit naman ang higpit ni Lord? Konting hakbang na lang naman, hindi pa sila pinayagan. Mga kapatid, may pit po ang Panginoon, pero hindi po siya ganun kay pit. Ma, ang haba-haba ng patience niya, ilang beses na silang nagpasaway eh. Ilang beses na silang nagreklamo, sumobra ho, inabuso na ho nila ang grasya ng Panginoon. Kaya akala ho nila walang hangganan. Kaya nga yun lagi ko pinapaalala sa atin. Pastor, bakit ako nabubuhay naman ako sa mali pero wala naman nangyayari sa akin? Mahaba kasi ang pasensya ng Diyos sa iyo, sa akin, sa akin din. Ma, minsan magtataka ako, ba't di pa ako naparusa? Kasi mahaba ang pasensya niya. Pero huwag ka, huwag kang mabubuhay sa mali kasi namamar- namamalo ang Diyos. At ang daming mga opportunities ang pwede nating mamis. Sila, yun na nga, they should have been traveling for only few weeks or days. But instead of weeks or days, it became 39 years and they were not able to enter the promised land. The first census supposed to be, maybe. Kaya kinuha yan para ho talaga sa kanilang census na tuloy na ta, na ulit kasi namatay lahat ho yun sa wilderness. Uh, all these people died yung pong mga umalis sa Exodus. Ang mga nanatili po doon sa promise ng yung mga anak na lang nila na naipanganak nila dito sa wilderness. Dalawang tao lamang po, only two men entered in the promised land that originally were from the people of Exodus. It's Joshua and Caleb. Si Joshua at si Caleb, the two of the twelve spies, were allowed to go in into the land to lead the people. Okay, I hope ay uh, ma- makita po natin yan. Ano ho? So that's Numbers chapter 14 and verse number 22 to 23. So yun na nga, makikita po natin yung tatlo. So, The summary of the book of Numbers. The summary of the book of Numbers. Let me end with this. The summary of the book of Numbers. Israel as a nation is in its infancy. At the, uh, at the outset of this book, only 13 months after Exodus from Egypt, in Numbers, the book of divine discipline, 
it becomes necessary for the nation to go through the painful process of testing and maturation. God must teach His people the consequences of irresponsible decisions. God has to stop it. They've been murmuring ever since they went out from Exodus, trying to bargain with God, something like that. Or, marami silang ano, reklamo. Sa totoo lang, Diyos natin siya. Ganun tayo, sometimes we can talk to God and, you know, tama, bargain with God with some things in our life, just like Abraham did. And God is so patient and sweet as our Father. He can, you know, allow us, payagan tayo. Pero, at the end of the day, you have to realize He's so sovereign. Sana mari, et, ito yung pinarealize na sa kanila ng Panginoon. Para ba sa, sa salita natin, eh, ang kukulit nyo, ako, oh, eto. Parang ganon. Para bang paulit-ulit, pinagbibigyan sila, paulit-ulit, binibigyan sila ng tubig, baka, haga sa ang kukulit pa rin nila, hindi pa rin tumitigil. Para bang akala nila, kakayanin nila ang Diyos. Oh, nung ang Diyos nag no oh, tapos kayo, hindi kayo makakarating sa promise na. At hindi na humababali yun. So, yun ang kailangan nating maintindihan sa ating Panginoon. At yun din ang kailangan nating maintindihan sa Book of Numbers. Sobra na po eh. Kaya pinaliwanag sa kanila ng Diyos na He sovereign. And it was a painful process. God must teach His people the consequences of his irresponsible decision. The 40 years of wilderness experience transforms them to a rap from a rabble of ex-slaves into a nation ready to take the promised land. Numbers begins with the old generation, and then in the middle of it is the tragi tragic transitional period, and then the third part, the last part, is the doorway to the land of Cana. So, tatlo po yun, tatlo po. Tatlo ang mababasa natin sa numbers in summary. Number one is the old generation. It was numbered. The old generation, yung mga tao sa Leviticus at Exodus, they were numbered, they were they had the census, binigyan, pin, pinangalanan po sila sa, per tribe, binati-hati sila. Pagkatapos po, on chapter 10 to 25, you find the transition. Israel follows God step by step until Canaan in his, is in his sight. Then in the crucial moment at Kadesh, they drew back in unbelief. Their murmurings had already become incessant. Yun na nga. Sa Kadesh Barnea, ito naging problema sa Kadesh Barnea. Meron sa isang lugar in, along the wilderness. Okay na eh. Sinensus na sina. Do you get, are you hearing me? They were census. They were ready. They are being prepared for the promised land. But in the middle of their journeys, they did not stop to murmur and rebel against God. They did not stop their hard, their hard headedness. At pag ikaw mapilit, kagaya ng Israelita, ganun ang Diyos, tatapusin niya. O kulit ninyo, so you will stay there. And that's God's final decision. Their murmurings had already become unstoppable. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord and the Lord heard it. But their unbelief after sending out the 12 spies at Kadesh Barnea is something God will not tolerate. Tolerate. The rebellion at Kadesh marks the pivotal point of the book. Oh, yo. Nung nag sila sa Kadesh Barnea, pagbalik ng mga 12 spies, we will study that very soon, ano, yung 12 spies, yung kapasawayan nila, yung uproar na nangyari. Pagkatapos po niyan, nag-decision nag, nag na ang Panginoon, hindi na sila makakarating sa promise na, and the new generation will come out. Yung kanilang mga anak na lang ang makakatapak. Okay, dalawa lang ang makakatapak na originally galing doon sa Exodus. Si, si Joshua at si Caleb. Lahat yun namatay na sa wilderness. Yung mga anak nila ang tatapak sa promise land. Kaya nagtatapos ang book doon sa, sa land of Moab. Malapit na po yun sa promise land. Nakipaggera pa si Joshua doon sa dalawang uh, uh, hari, si Og at si Sihon. Ano, mapapakaralan po natin yan lahat sa mga susunod po nating Sunday School lesson. Ang mahalaga po na intindihan po natin yung Book of Numbers ngayong araw na ito.